This video presentation is designed to give you, the technician, the information you need to perform reliable diagnosis and repair on the Meritor Wabco Easy Stop Trailer Anti-Lock Braking System, or ABS. Meritor Wabco has been in the business of building tractor and trailer anti-lock braking systems since 1981 and is considered by all heavy vehicle manufacturers to be a leader in this field. U.S. government regulations require all air brake trailers manufactured after March 1, 1998 to be equipped with ABS. Because there are different versions of Easy Stop Trailer ABS, refer to the Meritor Wabco Maintenance Manual number 33 for complete details and procedures for your system. This video program and the student manual that accompanies it are divided into two modules. The first module covers ABS components and operation. In this section, you will learn about the various Easy Stop system configurations and how these anti-lock braking systems work. In Module 2, you will learn procedures for diagnosing faults in Easy Stop ABS components and wiring. We'll also show you the proper way to remove and install Easy Stop ABS components. The Meritor Wabco Easy Stop Anti-Lock Braking System is an electronic self-diagnosing system that consists of three major components. An electronic control unit, or ECU, and valve assembly, an ABS modulator valve, and wheel speed sensors. During normal vehicle operation, the wheel speed sensors provide voltage signals to the ECU related to wheel speed. During braking, the change in the voltage signal tells the ECU when a wheel is likely to lock up. If wheel lockup is likely, the ECU regulates the modulator valve or valves. This controls the air applied to the brakes, preventing wheel lockup and helping to provide precise braking control and vehicle stability. Easy Stop ABS is alive and ready to work whenever the vehicle is moving. Now let's take a closer look at the components in the Easy Stop system. The ECU valve assembly is actually three components in one. The ECU sits on top and contains the microprocessor. This functions as the brain of the system. The middle section contains two solenoid controlled valves that are only activated during an ABS stop. The bottom part is a standard relay valve that regulates the flow of air to the brake chambers. This valve performs the normal braking of the trailer. The ECU valve assembly may be used alone or with additional ABS modulator valves, depending on the system configuration that's on a particular trailer. There are three types of ECU valve assemblies available, the 2100 Basic, the Standard, and the 4300. The 2100 Basic system consists of the ECU valve assembly and two wheel speed sensors. It cannot be configured any other way. This ECU also has no external diagnostic cable. The LED on top of the ECU and the trailer ABS warning lamp provide diagnostic blink codes. Activation procedures differ for each method. This diagnostic capability is available on any Easy Stop configuration. The standard ECU valve assembly covers a wide variety of system applications. It has the capability of monitoring two or four wheel speed sensors and can control one additional modulator valve if necessary. In addition to the previously mentioned diagnostic capabilities, this ECU also accepts an external diagnostic cable. The outside end of the diagnostic cable will accept either the diagnostic blink code tool or the ProLink 9000 diagnostic tool. We'll discuss these tools in Module 2. The 4300 ECU valve assembly is used in applications that require three ABS modulator valves, two of them being external. It will always have four speed sensor inputs. Otherwise, it has the same capabilities as the standard ECU. The ABS modulator valve is a solenoid controlled relay valve consisting of two electrically operated solenoids and a standard relay valve. It works the same as the bottom section of the ECU valve assembly. During an ABS stop, the ECU controls the fast-acting solenoids, which in turn control air pressure on the diaphragm. This causes the diaphragm to open or close air passages that can exhaust or hold the air pressure in the brake chambers. 
This externally mounted ABS modulator valve is added to systems controlled by the standard or 4300 ECU. The standard system can have one externally mounted ABS modulator valve, while the 4300 system always has two externally mounted valves. The ABS modulator valve contains a solenoid control unit with two solenoid plungers, a relay valve, and a spring-loaded piston. It has one port for the control airline and two ports for the supply air. The valve also has four outlet ports for delivering air to the brake chambers. For simplification, we've only illustrated one delivery port here. Supply air is available from the air tank. With no brakes applied, there is no control air pressure to move the piston. Therefore, spring pressure holds the piston shut and there is no air delivered to the brakes. When the brakes are applied during normal braking, control pressure flows past the two de-energized solenoids and into the piston chamber. This moves the piston against spring pressure, opening a gap to the delivery port. Full air pressure is allowed to apply the brakes since anti-lock braking is not required. When the brakes are released, control pressure is reduced and excess air pressure is vented through the vent opening. When the ECU determines that brake lockup is likely to occur based on wheel speed sensor information, it energizes and de-energizes the hold and exhaust solenoids in rapid succession. This exhausts or holds air pressure in the delivery channels while the locking wheel rolls back up to the speed of the other wheels. The ECU will also de-energize both solenoids during this cycle, allowing brake air pressure to be reapplied as necessary. The ABS modulator valve cycles through the exhaust, hold, and reapply modes several times a second during an ABS stop. This is much faster than the driver can pump the brake pedal, so pumping the pedal is not required. A wheel speed sensor assembly is located in the wheel ends of each monitored axle. A sensor holder and spring clip keep the wheel speed sensor in the correct position. For optimum performance and reliability, the wheel speed sensor is a completely sealed unit. It consists of a magnetic sensor pickup with an integrated extension cable and a molded-on connector. The sensor measures wheel speed using a tooth wheel that is part of the hub. The wheel speed sensor's magnetic pickup consists of a coil wrapped around a magnet which creates a magnetic field. As the teeth and spaces on the tooth wheel pass by the wheel speed sensor's magnetic pickup, an AC voltage signal is generated by the building and collapsing of this magnetic field. This voltage signal is sent directly to the ECU, which uses the signal to determine the relative speed of the wheel. Additional components of the Easy Stop ABS include a four-wire power cable, which provides power to the ECU from the trailer wiring harness. This cable also provides a path to ground and a wire for the ABS warning lamp. A three-wire ABS modulator valve cable is required on systems with a standard ECU and an external ABS modulator valve. This cable connects the external modulator valve to the ECU. In a 4300 system with two externally mounted ABS modulator valves, this double-ended Y cable is required to connect both valves to the ECU. The diagnostic cable can be used with the standard and 4300 systems. It has a molded ECU connector on one end and a molded SAE J1587 diagnostic connector on the other end. The diagnostic cable may be equipped with a diagnostic blink code tool. This tool is used to access diagnostic blink codes and to reconfigure the system. The tool is removable so that a ProLink 9000 diagnostic tool can be connected in its place. Also part of the Easy Stop system is the ABS warning lamp, which is mounted on the outside of the trailer. The lamp comes on if there is an ABS malfunction and can also be used to blink out fault codes. Now, let's look at the various Easy Stop system configurations. The available configurations include 2S1M, 2S2M, 4S2M, and 4S3M. The S stands for sensors, and the M stands for the ABS modulator valves. The 2S1M configuration uses two wheel speed sensors and one ECU valve assembly. The ECU monitors wheel speed on one axle only. 
This configuration uses either the 2100 basic or the standard ECU valve assembly. The 2S2M configuration features two wheel speed sensors, one ECU valve assembly, and one externally mounted ABS modulator valve. This configuration monitors wheel speed at one axle only. If it's used on a tandem axle trailer, each valve will control both sets of wheels on one side of the trailer. Input from the YE1 sensor is used to monitor the curbside wheels, while input from the BU1 sensor is used to monitor the roadside wheels. Air pressure to the curbside wheels is controlled by the ECU-mounted ABS modulator valve, while air pressure to the roadside wheels is controlled by the externally-mounted ABS modulator valve. This configuration uses the standard ECU. The 4S2M configuration uses four wheel speed sensors, one ECU valve assembly, and one external ABS modulator valve. Operation is similar to the 2S2M configuration, except that wheel speed sensors are mounted in the wheel ends of both axles on the tandem axle trailer. If one axle of the tandem axle trailer is a lift axle, Sensors BU2 and YE2 are always mounted to the lift axle. This configuration also uses the standard ECU. The 4S3M configuration uses four wheel speed sensors, one ECU valve assembly, and two externally mounted ABS modulator valves for a total of three valves. This system is used primarily on drawbar trailers. Two wheel speed sensors are mounted on the front axle while an additional two sensors are mounted on one of the rear tandem axles. This configuration requires the 4300 ECU. The Easy Stop ABS is powered from the tractor's ignition switch through the auxiliary pin of the seven-way connector. Power is also provided to the Easy Stop ECU through the stoplight circuit. The stoplight circuit is used as a backup if the auxiliary pin is not powered as is the case with a non-ABS tractor. The power cable for the Easy Stop ABS has four wires. Permanent power through the auxiliary pin, which normally uses the blue wire. Stoplight power through the red wire. A ground wire. And a 12-volt feed from the ECU to the ABS warning lamp. This concludes the Module 1 portion of this video program. Please stop the tape and complete the review. Do not rewind at this time. In this module, we'll discuss diagnostic procedures for the Easy Stop ABS, including the use of the Blink Code tool and ProLink 9000 in both normal and expert modes. We'll also cover the steps for removing and replacing all major Easy Stop components. Finally, we'll look at the steps for testing ABS functions before putting a trailer back into service. The ECU detects electrical faults within the Easy Stop ABS. When a fault occurs, the ECU stores a fault code in memory, then signals a malfunction by turning on the warning lamp. All trailers built after March 1, 1998 are required to have the warning lamp on the left side of the trailer, near the rearmost pair of axles. Prior to March 1, 1998, the ABS warning lamp may be mounted on the front left corner of the trailer. The warning lamp on these trailers may also work differently than those on newer trailers. We'll explain some of the differences later. Now, let's discuss the possible faults the ABS may encounter. There are two kinds of faults, active and stored. Active faults are those currently in the system, such as a broken wire or disconnected cable. Codes from active faults can only be cleared after the repair has been made. Stored faults are caused by intermittent conditions, such as loose connector terminals or pinched wires or they may be past active faults that were never cleared. These codes are stored in memory until cleared by a technician or are erased automatically after 250 power-ups. There are four ways to extract fault information from the Easy Stop ECU. You can use the LED on the top cover of the ECU, ABS warning lamp, diagnostic tool, 
or the MPSI ProLink 9000. If there is no diagnostic tool capability, which is the case in the 2100 BASIC system, you must read blink codes through the LED in the ECU top cover or the ABS warning lamp. All ACU assemblies have an LED mounted to the top cover. This LED blinks active faults continuously or in sequence if the system is placed in diagnostic mode. To use this LED for reading blink codes, you'll need a mirror, white sheet of paper, or other reflective material to more easily see the LED flash. You can also enter diagnostic mode by powering up the ECU and counting the flashes of the ABS warning lamp on the outside of the trailer. A diagnostic tool is available for the standard and 4300 Easy Stop systems. This tool has a built-in switch button and LED. The ECU flashes the LED to show fault codes. The diagnostic tool is attached to the J1587 connector on the diagnostic cable assembly. Though you may leave the tool attached to the connector permanently, it also disconnects readily. Always replace the protective cap when you've completed diagnosis and repairs. Another available diagnostic tool is the MPSI ProLink 9000. The ProLink 9000 is a handheld computer dedicated to diagnostics and can save you several steps in the diagnostic procedure. Kentmore kit number J38500-403 contains the ProLink 9000, the Meritor Wabco ABS diagnostic cartridge, necessary cables and adapters, and an operating manual. The main advantage of the ProLink 9000 is that it not only shows the diagnostic code number, but also provides descriptions of the code and the suspect circuit. It lets you actively interface with the Easy Stop ABS, such as test firing ABS modulator valves or getting a readout of wheel speed sensors while spinning the wheel by hand. Now let's look at the procedures for retrieving diagnostic codes. To determine whether an active fault exists that requires diagnosis, first park the trailer. Supply adequate power to the ABS through the seven-way connector. This can be done through the ignition switch of a connected trailer or by using a fully charged auxiliary battery. If you're using the ABS warning lamp for blink codes, you must have power at both wires of the seven-way connector. Observe the ABS warning lamp. If it comes on and goes off, the system is okay. If it comes on and stays on, there is an active fault present. On older systems, especially those with the warning lamp on the left front corner of the trailer, the trailer must be moving above four miles per hour for the lamp to go out. If it stays on above this speed, there is an active fault. Refer to maintenance manual number 33 for more information on older Easy Stop systems. As mentioned earlier, the ECU stores both active and stored faults. It displays active faults first in the order of last in, first out. It's important to always recheck the codes after service to see if there are any additional codes. There are two levels of blink code diagnostics available on the Easy Stop ABS normal mode and expert mode. The first level of diagnostics, the normal mode, provides a simple one or two digit number that represents the component and circuit at fault. That fault must then be repaired before another fault code will flash. Whatever method is used, the LED or lamp will blink the same. The number of blinks represents a particular fault code. To read the codes, first park the trailer. Always wear protective equipment such as safety glasses and safety shoes. Block the trailer wheels and secure lifted axles with safety stands. Next, supply power to the ECU by turning the ignition switch on or by applying auxiliary power to the blue and red wires on the seven-way connector. For all Easy Stop systems, the LED on the ECU top cover will continuously flash an existing fault code whenever the ECU is powered. This same fault code can also be read on the ABS warning lamp or diagnostic tool. To make the ABS warning lamp blink fault codes, apply power to the ECU through the stoplight circuit. This is the red wire from the seven-way connector. Then apply power to the permanent power or blue wire circuit for one second. Remove power for one second, then reapply power. If a tractor is connected, this can be done through the ignition switch. The warning lamp will now blink the fault codes. 
To read codes on the diagnostic tool, install the tool and press the switch for one second. The LED on the diagnostic tool should come on. If no faults exist, the LED will go out. If there are faults in the system, the LED will start its blink sequence. The number of blinks refers to the component or circuit at fault. Remember that this method is not available on the 2100 basic system. Refer to maintenance manual number 33 for a chart that will help you interpret the blink codes. Disconnect power to the ABS and repair the cause of the fault. After making repairs, reconnect power and recheck the system for any additional fault codes. If there are one or more faults still in the system, the LED or warning lamp will blink again. Additional faults must be repaired until there are no more active codes in the system. If no more faults exist, the LED and warning lamp will go out and stay out. Even though fault codes no longer blink, the repaired codes are still stored in the ECU memory. We'll explain later how to erase them. If you've replaced a wheel speed sensor, the vehicle must be driven over 4 miles per hour to get the lamp to turn off. The second level of diagnostics is the expert mode. This mode provides more detailed information on a fault and also lets you access stored faults. In expert mode, there will be four digits or sets of flashes, each separated by a two and a half second pause. The first digit is the configuration code. The second digit identifies the component or location of the fault. The third digit identifies the type of fault, such as an open cable or short to ground. The fourth digit indicates the number of occurrences. The expert mode uses the same LED and warning lamp capabilities to blink out fault information. But the procedure for activating expert mode is different. If using the diagnostic tool, install it to begin the procedure. Apply power to the ECU as we showed you earlier. Have a paper and pencil handy for recording codes. Press the diagnostic tool switch for one second, then release. The LED should blink once, then go out. Press the switch again after the lamp goes out, and again release after one second. The LED should again blink once, then go off. If no faults exist, the LED will flash two, three, four, or five times to indicate system configuration. After the configuration code, the LED comes on for two and a half seconds and then goes off. If faults do exist, begin recording the number of blinks. Each digit is followed by a two and a half second pause. If there are multiple fault codes, each complete set of three digits is displayed in order, followed by a long separator blink. Use the chart in the maintenance manual to interpret each code. With your list of faults completed, disconnect power from the Easy Stop system and make all necessary repairs. For the 2100 basic ECU, or for any ECU without a diagnostic tool, the procedure for reading expert mode codes is as follows. Turn the ignition switch off, or disconnect power at the blue wire of the seven-way connector. Apply power to the stoplight circuit by depressing and holding the brake pedal, or by applying power to the red wire of the seven-way connector. Give the ECU time to complete its self-tests. While continuing to apply power to the stoplight circuit, turn the ignition switch power on and off twice, then back on. Observe the ABS warning lamp on the trailer. The lamp will blink the configuration code, followed by one long blink. It will then blink out each three-digit code once. After the codes have been displayed, the lamp remains on. If you choose to use the LED on top of the ECU cover, its action will mirror that of the ABS warning lamp. After the expert mode is complete, however, this LED will go back to continuously flashing active fault codes. Following any repairs, you'll need to enter the reconfigure clear all mode. The following procedure will clear all fault codes that are not active. The clear all procedure does not apply to the 2100 basic ECU since it erases fault codes automatically after they've been repaired. Once again, begin the procedure by parking the trailer and applying power to the ECU. If not already in place, install the diagnostic tool. 
Press the switch for one second and release for one second. The LED should come on, then go off. Repeat this action two more times, letting the LED come on and go off each time. If there are no active faults in the system, the LED flashes quickly eight times to confirm that the memory is clear. Next, the LED continuously flashes the system configuration code until power to the ECU is removed. If the only fault code that exists is code 14, the ECU has not been configured for the system. For information on reconfiguring the ECU, see Maintenance Manual number 33 or call Meritor Wabco at 1-800-535-5560. Now, let's put some of the things you've learned about Easy Stop Diagnostics to work in a diagnostic scenario. The first scenario is that the trailer ABS warning lamp is on all the time, and the ABS on the trailer is not working. The trailer has the 2S2M configuration. First, verify the condition by turning the ignition switch on and observing the ABS warning lamp. In this case, the lamp comes on and stays on so there's at least one active fault in the system. Now you're ready to retrieve the active fault codes, park the trailer, and power up the ECU. If it's not already on the trailer, install the diagnostic tool. Depress the switch for one second, then release. The lamp comes on for two and a half seconds, then goes off, then blinks four times. From the code chart in the maintenance manual, you can see that four blinks indicates a fault in the YE1 wheel speed sensor circuit. You now target your diagnosis to this curbside wheel speed sensor circuit. Begin by inspecting the entire sensor and cable assembly. In this case, the problem is fairly obvious, a severely cut sensor cable. The only repair option here is to replace the entire wheel speed sensor and cable assembly. Following the repair, perform the clear-all procedure to erase all fault codes from memory. It looks like there are no more active codes in the system, so you may perform the function inspections and return the trailer to service. We'll explain the function inspections later. Okay, what if the source of the problem is harder to find than the last one? Let's now assume that the ABS warning lamp only comes on intermittently. Repeat all your verification steps and repeat the diagnostic tool installation steps. In this case, there are no active codes, so the LED only comes on once, then goes off. Depress and release the switch twice to enter expert mode. After the configuration code flashes, you observe and record the following blink sequence. Four, five, seven. The first digit after the configuration code is the fault location. Four blinks indicates wheel speed sensor circuit YE1. The next digit is a five, which indicates a short to ground. The final digit is a seven, which means the fault has occurred seven times in the last 250 power-ups. As before, carefully inspect the suspect sensor and cable. Look for conditions such as a shaved or frayed cable wire, which may cause the wire to short against the chassis. In our scenario, the wiring looks good, so we move on to the sensor resistance test. To perform this test, connect the leads of a digital volt ohm meter across the terminal pins on the sensor connector. An acceptable ohm meter reading is between 500 and 2000 ohms. This reading looks good. Now we'll perform a sensor voltage test. To begin this test, set the volt ohm meter to the AC voltage scale. Rotate the wheel to check the voltage. Voltage should be consistently above 0.2 volts and should increase as you increase wheel speed. Remember though that this was an intermittent problem so you may have to tap or wiggle the suspect sensor and cable to recreate the condition. The short may also be in the extension cable that runs from the sensor assembly to the ECU so check this cable too. In our case the voltage occasionally drops below 0.2 volts as you wiggle and bend the cable assembly near the sensor. This may indicate a short inside the cable. If necessary, install a new sensor and cable assembly. For more detailed procedures on these tests, refer to the maintenance manual. When repairs are complete, 
Check the blink codes again for additional faults. Perform the clear all procedure to erase all fault codes from memory. Check one last time to make sure the ABS warning lamp goes off and return the trailer to service. This concludes the diagnostic portion of Module 2. Please stop the tape here and complete the diagnostic scenario in the student book. Do not rewind at this time. The next segment covers component removal and installation. We'll look at the procedures for the wheel speed sensors first. Exact sensor location may vary with suspension type and ABS configuration. In every installation, however, the sensor is located immediately behind the wheel, inside the brake assembly. The installation shown here is typical. Remove the wheel and brake drum according to manufacturer's instructions. Remove the wheel speed sensor by rotating and pulling away from the holder. Be sure that you grasp the sensor, not the cable. Remove the spring clip from the sensor holder. Cut any plastic ties that hold the sensor cable in place and disconnect the sensor cable from the extension cable. To install, lubricate the sensor and spring clip with a mineral oil-based lubricant. Check maintenance manual number 33 for required lubricant properties. Push the spring clip into the holder first, then install the sensor into the holder as far as it will go. Pay special attention to the sensor cable routing to avoid interference with brake operation. Use tie wraps to secure the cable. Check the gap between the sensor and the tone wheel, especially after the hub is installed. The sensor ideally should contact the tone wheel, but a very slight gap due to tone wheel runout is okay. Now, let's look at the removal and installation procedures for an externally mounted ABS modulator valve. To prevent possible injury, release all pressure from the air system before attempting to service any components with airline connections. Disconnect the electrical cable and the airlines from the modulator valve. Tag or label them for installation. Next, remove the ABS modulator valve. It can be mounted by bolts, or on a mounting pipe nipple. Reverse the removal steps to install the ABS modulator valve. Replace any damaged parts, such as bolts, nuts, or pipe nipples. Mounting pipe nipples must have ANSI half-inch NPT taper pipe threads with ANSI Schedule 80 properties. For bolt-on mountings, tighten the bolts and nuts to 18 foot-pounds. Now, let's look at removal and installation of the ECU valve assembly. This assembly is serviced only as a complete unit. As before, release all pressure from the air system before attempting to remove these components. At the ECU, disconnect the diagnostic connector cable, the power cable, the wheel speed sensor cables, and the electrical cable to the modulator valves. Remove the air lines, label them for installation. Remove the ECU valve assembly. Like the ABS modulator valve, it can be mounted by bolts or on a mounting pipe nipple. Reverse the removal steps to install the ECU valve assembly. Replace any damaged parts, such as bolts, nuts, or pipe nipples. For pipe nipple mounts, the pipe must have a 3 quarter inch NPT Schedule 80 nipple. Tighten the assembly securely with the valve exhaust port facing downward. For bracket-mounted installations, tighten the bolts and nuts to 18 foot-pounds. After making all electrical connections, check electrical system integrity using the warning lamp procedure. Reconfigure the ECU if necessary. Following repairs, you should perform the ABS function inspection. This is the final test before putting the trailer back into service. In this video, we'll only cover the tests for ignition-powered systems. For function inspections on older stoplight-powered systems, contact Meritor Wabco at 1-800-535-5560 or refer to Easy Stop Maintenance Manual number 33. For ignition-powered systems, begin by clearing all codes from the ECU memory as we showed you earlier. Connect the tractor and trailer together, then connect the seven-way connector and verify that battery voltage is 11 to 14 volts DC. Turn the ignition switch on and verify that the ABS warning lamp comes on and goes off. 
If a wheel speed sensor was replaced, start the vehicle and drive it at a speed above 4 miles per hour. You'll also have to drive the vehicle following any repairs on older Easy Stop systems. The ABS warning lamp should go off. This indicates that the system is operating properly. If it comes back on, then the system still has a fault that must be located and repaired. If the lamp goes off during the drive, it should now turn on and go off each time the ignition switch is turned on. For more assistance, contact your Meritor District Service Manager by calling 1-800-535-5560 in the U.S. or Canada. This concludes our presentation of the Meritor Wabco Easy Stop Trailer Anti-Lock Braking System. After stopping the tape, please complete the final review in your student book and keep this tape handy for future reference.